Hey, this is Bill DeWeese here with Long Strange Journey and uh, coming to you with a video um, about an important um, gadget that I use. Uh, and uh, it may come as a surprise to absolutely no one that I'm kind of a gadget geek. And uh, this is, um, I just got this back from Warranty Replace and was really excited because I got a chance to actually not use it for a couple of weeks and, uh, and, and just be reminded about how handy this is. And what we're talking about here is the, uh, the Feutech WG Wearable Gimbal 2X. Uh, this is a wearable gimbal designed for the GoPro form factor. And uh, we'll get a little bit more about what that means specifically. But uh, what I'm using this with is in the connection with a shoulder strap mount from a company called Stuntman and it allows you to have a unique perspective uh, from your video and avoid some of the pitfalls that come uh, with the uh, standard mounts that you typically see. So the standard way to get an action camera, then this camera is getting put in harm's way, right? It's getting wet, it's getting um, bounced around, dropped, and banged. So it's, we want a GoPro for something like this, so we have an action camera that can handle that environment and uh, still get the great videos uh, but one of the problems we have is these are really small they're hard to manage you're in a situation where a tripod is just not going to work um, and you can use clamp mounts i do use clamp mounts a lot specifically for getting a uh, video where it is on a particular zone of the boat or or at a campsite uh, but what also uh, you would typically see these worn on the hat or on a chesty mount now the hat is a, is a great location. The problem with the hat is you have to be very cognizant that it's tied to your head because you're always moving your head, you're always moving your camera. So you are needing to do a lot of editing of that to minimize that from being disruptive. Or uh, so what this does is this is, an, ignore the clamp. The clamp is just a kickstand so this doesn't fall over while I'm demonstrating it. But the GoPro goes in here. It has a very simple initial uh, adjustment. Uh, this is a knurled fastener here, and you uh, that it frictions up against this bar, and you you loosen that, and then slide this in and out, left to right in this case, and you balance your camera. The more balanced your camera is, the less motor is required, less battery is required to actually. Um, stabilize your camera. This is a three axis gimbal. Now real quickly, what is the value of a three axis gimbal? It's actually less and less for stabilization anymore. If you look at the GoPro 7, 8, and 9, you look at the iPhone 12 and 13, you look at uh, the Android phones, this is coming off of a, this video is actually coming off my Google Pixel, which has image stabilization. The image stabilization is actually really good now. So you don't necessarily need the GoPro, or the, the, the gimbals as you did before for image stabilization. But what it does do is it allows you very smooth transitions between different camera angles, focal points, and perspectives. So one of the common ones you'll see a, a gimbal used for is like somebody on a skateboard, right? You can bring that camera way down and shoot it at the foot or at the board or at the perspective of the ground and the wheels and you can bring it back up and all the way out overarching like a boom camera and you can get a perspective of the overall activity and action so that can happen smoothly with a gimbal and that's the principal goal of the gimbal in this case is the smoothness of the transition in rough environments specifically bouncing around on a boat or in my case walking around on a boat uh, whereas unlike like a kayaker, um, if you wanted to be doing videos of your kayak fishing journeys, I mean, you can have a camera or a camera on your hat, a camera on the bow facing you, and then a camera on the back coming up off a pole facing forward. And you've pretty much captured everywhere action is going to be. The universe of action is within one of those three frames and you're off and set to, to go down to editing to create a, a great video. On a boat, there is no cockpit. You're moving all over the place. You're fishing on the bow. You're fishing on the back. You're, you're doing all kinds of stuff. The gimbal works really nicely for that. Uh, there's a video that I did called Foghorn Redfish um, that demonstrates that. I'm in the stern starboard side of the boat up on the back deck catching a fish. 
and I walk all the way down to the lower deck around to the port gunnel and sit down beside the fish on the gunnel and the camera just literally follows that action with very little movement. So, and certainly no bounce and stability. So what you have here is this camera can rotate, but when you turn on the gimbal, the gimbal will take over. It'll do a default orientation. You can see that orientation. But whenever you move it, like I just did, it resets the plane, the plane of action, right? So that's the value of the gimbal is you can very quickly do this. The value of this gimbal is it's wearable or mountable. You can control this in a remote location using an app, but you can just simply control it by refocusing it. And um, then that makes it very stable as you're going up and down and up and down. It will wait on that. An example of that is a video I did uh, on riding a motorcycle um, uh, through um, the, the forest. Uh, I think it's called Little Bike in the Big Woods. And if you look at that video, you can see the fairing and the handlebar of the motorcycle are bouncing up and down. But this is just locked onto the horizon. That's with this backpack, that's with this gimbal, and that's with this camera. And so uh, when I bought this, I was a little bit nervous. This is actually coming back from service. I bought this uh, from a company that I have no familiarity with. And uh, I was really literally thinking that this is going to be a disposable gimbal. Uh, I just had some problems with the gimbal and had it giving me some grief. And then it finally went to a point where it didn't want to boot up re regularly. So I took the gimbal to the, uh, contacted them. And at first you're interacting over email. So I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be a road to nowhere. This was a disposable gimbal. I should have realized that from the start and just kind of deal with it. They were really wonderful. I gave them a video of what was going on with the problem. I gave them all the purchase history and then they just went right to work. I shipped it to them in California. They, I got it back within a week. And, and, and they actually, I think, replaced the gimbal, has a different serial number. So they did an excellent job of supporting this gimbal. Uh, it's almost a year old, so it was the perfect time for it to go bad, but they did a really great job. Uh, so again, this mounts using a standard tripod mount to the stuntman. The stuntman offers a couple of different mount ways. This is actually strapped to the, the backpack strap. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about this. What I really love about this is, is that this gives you a different perspective. Again, there's a couple of different ways. If you have the hat cam, you've got a perspective. It's a very good perspective. It follows your action, but it also follows your head movement. Another common technique that you'll see people wear is the chesty. The chesty is right in the middle of your chest. And, the, and what you tend to see is if someone's fishing, all you see is the hands and the reels and everything. And so what you have is a misplaced perspective and you have a lot of things in the way. This brings the camera up and to your left, in this case where I've mounted it. So it's basically between my collarbone and my top of my left shoulder. So it's almost like the camera is looking over your shoulder. And so it's up out of the way when you're, when you're doing activity. But it's very close to you to be able to adjust it, to flip it up, to tap it, to do some, uh, do some actions on the camera to see what is actually going on and with your video and whether or not you're working. But as you can see from this where I'm fishing, it's not in the way of the camera at all, uh, of the action at all. And so even that was with this because my camera was out. I was using this in lieu of the, the gimbal. Uh, so the, the horizontal horizon's a little bit tweaked and I can't make a quick adjustment like I can with the gimbal. So with the gimbal, the activity is very easy to capture and very easy to lock onto and remain locked onto with your one thirds or with your horizon uh, set a certain way. Um, so you can see the value of having the gimbal as a positional camera as well as maintaining all those axes while you're un moving underway. So the other very good benefit of having this up here is your microphone is actually just a little out of the way but very close to your face. The microphones here are probably six to ten inches away so you get very good audio when you're narrating a video and so that works out really well for this as well. And so um, the, the, it will mount on a standard quarter 20, so you can use all your other favorite tripod-based gadgets to, to mount this. I actually have created a number of one and a half inch thin wall PVC tubes that have a quarter inch threaded stainless steel bolt going out the side at the top and out the very top of a PVC cap. So I can mount my gimbal anywhere and drop it into a rod holder on my boat and get a unique perspective 
on the water while I'm running the boat and get the benefit of the gimbal dealing with all the ups and downs of being on a boat and getting really smooth video. Uh, so it's actually quite a handy tool. This is the Feiyu Tech. Uh, it's one of the things that I really enjoy about this. I'm glad that this turned out to be a good experience on the support side uh, because of the fact that I would probably have run out to buy another one and there's only a couple of people that have the wearable gimbal. And real quickly, what I'll point out by that is it's a very compact gimbal, right? That's the wearability is this is, a, this is not gonna work for heavy camera. It's designed specifically for the GoPro. And I'll show you like, if you use this, a stick gimbal like you would typically see people use with a cell phone gimbal or also with a GoPro, is they use the GoPro standard mount techniques that, are, that you see everywhere in and around the GoPro. So that is something that works um, for the typical GoPro gimbal. Uh, this wearable gimbal uses a, a aluminum. All of this is aluminum and it's strapped and has a knurled nut that you can quickly hand tighten. And what you get from that is a secure, compact, this whole thing can spin freely and, and, and have all the accesses available to you. The GoPro has a USB-C port, right? So I'm using, this is my Alonzi um, battery door cover that I use when I want to power the GoPro. The GoPro and this both, um, I use, I run a battery pack inside and come out the headphone hole of this Osprey backpack. And I can, I put a magnetic USB-C here and a magnetic uh, USB mini and I can just buddy breathe off that battery pack and keep both of these fully charged all day long and I'm only limited by my SD cards. I don't have to change out batteries uh, uh, that often. Um, and I do that with this. Uh, uh, so this is actually a really good effective uh, product uh, and uh, good for action camera. It's also, I'll point out that it's actually also very good for using this camera in a remote location. Uh, let's say you're uh, can't film a certain area, you can't get down there but to set up a camera or it's a, a unique high perspective that you want, you can talk to this via Bluetooth and you can you can drive it, pan it, scale it, you can do whatever you want from an application so you can actually run this camera remotely using the WG2X. That's another feature I don't use that much. I've used once or twice, it's kind of nice. Um, but um, definitely what you want from this is the, the, the three axis, the, the stabilization, the, the point and put, right? You hold that for like a second, you'll feel a haptic or a tactile response, and then you'll see that you have now place that camera there and whatever you do, it's gonna hold that line for you. Uh, so when you're moving around on the boat or you're moving around uh, anywhere else, you'll see that it get, does a really good job of holding that camera into place. So I hope this video helps kind of see a different way of shooting video in an active mode outdoors in the rain. And this is a water, water resistant gimbal. You have to investigate all of the uh, aspects of whether or not it's waterproof enough for your application. And also know there's water resistant, there's waterproof, and then there's salt waterproof. And we all know that salt waterproof is a whole nother thing than just being waterproof or water resistant, that you have to watch out for corrosion. Uh, I'm all over this thing uh, and keeping it from getting salt water on it and also making sure that it gets a good cleaning. And I use cleanse oil and other products just to make sure that we're keeping everything nice and water is displaced. I hope this helps. Thank you.